Now back to our top story. We told you about the courtroom arrest of district attorney candidate Judge Joe Brown earlier today. Judge Joe was charged with contempt of court after exchanging words with a juvenile court magistrate while attempting to defend a client in a child support case. Well, joining me now, the man himself, live in our studios, Judge Joe Brown. Judge Brown, thanks for being here, first of all. Thank you. Judge, as, as I told you just a moment ago, we've pretty much covered the nuts and bolts throughout the day of what happened in the courtroom. My first question to you, if you were on that bench, what would you have done if an attorney had approached you in the manner that you approached Judge Horn? First off, I wouldn't have been a big a fool as he was. Any lawyer that knows what he's doing would have summarily dismissed the case. The whole thing was instigated by my opponent's nephew, one Brett Wyrick. Uh, he and Harold Horn had been talking before that. Now, one thing, A, Harold Horn is supposed to be a magistrate, and the only people in the county that can appoint magistrates by law are circuit, chantry, and criminal court judges. He was appointed by basically a General Sessions judge. The woman came out and said, please help me. I told her I wasn't representing people anymore, but my drives came to the fore. I looked at the jacket and I almost got nauseated. It was The such jacket, a of course, case. meaning the portfolio that pertains to the case, right? Yes. Okay. Now, it was not about child support. It's some woman that dated somebody 20 years ago and he's got it in his head that she's the father, that she is the mother of a daughter that she doesn't even have. So they don't have name of child, date of birth, birth certificate anyway. And under the federal guidelines they put down on juvenile court, it was defective. There was a stamped uh, signature on the summons, which is illegal under Tennessee law, and there was no service of process. So this has been going on for eight years, and when they wanted to reset her for the convenience of one of the people they have down there that they appoint and get big money off of these appointments, I just said, no way, dismiss this. So he wanted to go round and round, and finally I just said, well, you know, I've done this before. I've taken this place up on many a habeas corpus in my career, and I've almost, in fact, have shut you down several times. Do you want me to do this again? Because this is egregious. But, Judge, do you have the authority to do that at that point? I mean, when you're, when you're acting as an attorney, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you're acting basically as an officer of the court. But the yes. judge, the presiding judge, has the final say even when wrong. Don't there's you have no, a protocol that you would have to follow? There's no presiding judge. You have to understand that. The presiding judge has not been on a bench for three years. He's ill and won't resign. This whole thing started because the previous residing judge was not allowed to hear cases. That's the late Kenneth Turner. He didn't even have a high school diploma, so the state Supreme Court forbade him to hear cases. So we had to pay for five referees and a special judge because he wasn't competent to do his job. Now, Harold Horn is an attorney. I have massacred him badly over the years in various habeas corpus petitions and I guess he still has his pride or something up because I wasn't really out of line so and yes I raised he, my voice. You think that he may have a grudge to bear? Is that yes. what you're asserting? Well, and let me ask he you this, was judge. talking with Brett Wyrick before I got in there and I heard him. They were discussing see if you can find some reason to get him in trouble. Wyrick now, of course and also, also an officer of the court. Well, I think he's a clerk. Right. So what happened is several judges ordered me released, but they couldn't find me because juvenile court deliberately falsified the records and had me in there for child support rather than simple contempt. So that was a compound, and we looked it over, and Horn signed as judge of juvenile court, which he does not have the authority uh, to do. And what he put in as his uh, documentation suggested I was in there for contempt, failing to pay child support. And I have no children that are anywhere close to being under 18. Right. Uh, judge, I do have to ask this in summation. There are those out there throughout this afternoon that have uh, speculated that you were politically grandstanding by being in the court and putting yourself in this position. Your no. reaction to those charges? I've been doing that for 40 years. I always have stood out for justice. In fact, that's why I decided to run for DA. Going to jail, I don't mind that if it's going to promote justice. It's just that somebody needs to bring that circus down there to account. The feds have claimed that they have found egregious violations down there in terms of the conduct. Those I are well saw documented. it. And it's disgusting. I was really nauseated in terms of what I saw. But Judge, again, all of that withstanding, and I'll ask you one more time before we go. 
if you would have been on the bench at that moment and an attorney had approached you in that manner and talked to you in the manner that you did talk to Judge Horn, he's would you not have a judge. He was a magistrate, but he's still not a, even he's, a magistrate. But he's still a sitting officer he's of the court. He's not the a bench. sitting but officer of the you, court. Is what illegal. would you have done, though, Judge? Excuse me. If the someone would is, have, if someone would have look, done that to the you, the point what would you have is. Done? I would not be sitting there under such circumstances. It's a charade down there. I have never involved myself in that kind of misapplication of power. Now, the point is, he's not a legitimate magistrate. There has been case after case that's gone to this state Supreme Court and they keep doing the same thing over and over again. Federal courts have said doing what they do down there exposes them to personal civil liability to anybody that's been done wrong. That case is severe versus Turner and it comes from the mid 80s. It's still good law and they have refused to obey the law. They have privatized the whole place. Everything I saw down there was done to enhance profitability for the corporate entity and to give the select few attorneys that they bring down there to handle these cases an opportunity to make money. And it sickened me to see this poor woman subjected to what she had been put through so that some nondescript lawyer that couldn't make it in the real world was allowed to make quite a few hundred dollars every time she brought this woman down there over the last eight years. And then to put almost a $2,000 cash bond on this woman for a situation that involved a non-existent child was just absolutely ridiculous. So, so you maintain that your disrespectful actions in that courtroom today were justified based on that? Well, it's not initial disrespect. He disrespected me. I have been on the bench, I've practiced law, it's 40 years worth of doing this, and any time any lawyer showed me that when I was sitting on the bench as either judge, special judge, referee, or whatever it may have been, well not referee, I would have dismissed it outright. And to sit there and get it thrown in your face when it's clearly in violation of the recent federal order is disgusting. In other words, the feds just returned a report a couple of months ago citing their still, well their continuation on doing these kind of things. Yes, sir, so it's like, okay, I'm asking you to do process. something the lawyer should do and you want to sit there and start telling me to sit down, I'm in contempt. And then I point out you don't have the authority to do anything but find me. So at that point, when you start saying I can put you in jail, you got a big problem because that is official oppression. Now, I don't care who breaks the law, I'm going after them. So I'm looking at somebody up there that ought to know better that is clearly violating the written law of this state, all of the case law. So what am I supposed to do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, you get past the point where you are out of order and in fact engaging in criminal misconduct. Then I'm going to sit there and express what you need to hear. He is Judge Joe Brown. Judge Brown, thank you so much for joining us tonight.